Welcome back to Unlocked. Today I have the man who thinks he's the star. My mm. dad, Todd Chrisley. Thank you. And just so that we're clear, <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. I just like to, you know, try to make myself believe he's not. But thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. And first, let me say how, well, you know, I tell you every day how proud I am. Yes, you. you do. But I am so proud of what you have created, you and your friend Aaron doing everything to set your own podcast up. You know, we had started with Chrisley Confessions. Lindsay had started, I think, even before we did um, with Coffee Combos. Yep. And so then when you just kind of went out here and did it on your own, I was like, okay, I'm going to step back, let her do this, and this is kind of find out, you know, if this is what, you know, if she can do it. And then I was actually on the phone getting data, and I find out that you actually went higher in the charts than what I did. Well, so, folks, I mean, I will acknowledge that if I'm going to be beaten, I want to be beaten by my children. <laughs> and so now I'm beaten by my two daughters. So that's a wonderful thing. So remember, it goes back to that saying that I've always told you, that if I tell you not to do something and you do it anyway and you succeed at it. You still win. I still win because you're still my child. Yes, exactly. So you've done really well. So congratulations. Thank you. And... I, we'll see how your episode pans out compared to mom's because. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to cry. She, oh, you'll cry. No, I'm not you'll crying. You'll cry. I'm not crying. We'll get you there. Because mom's did really well. Did it? Mom's did really well. And all of the feedback that we've gotten on YouTube and the comments, everybody loves mama. Well, why would you not? I know. She's an angel. I mean, I have said, I give thanks every day. And you, know, you you, and I just started talking before we actually started filming that I was on my knees this morning in prayer, which is what I do every morning at seven yep. o'clock, your mother and I. And I give thanks to God every day from the time that I met your mother. And and then I thanked God after that time that I really got to know your mom. Shut up. Um, but, you know, that's another episode. Um, but I really, no one's ever said, God, I just, I can't stand Julie. No, never. It's always, she is the sweetest soul. How did you get to be so lucky? Yeah. And I used to think to myself, <laughs> I certainly would not be friends with someone who said something that stupid. <laughs> um, but <laughs> now I'm like, God, it's it's true. How did I get to be so lucky yeah. to have a woman that has such a pure heart? She has a servant's heart, which has been passed down to you, which I'm grateful for every day. And, you know, you and I have kind of had some back and forth, you know, in the past couple of months of, you know, with all the stuff that we've had going on, yeah. that you start to let anger kind of become the armor around your heart mm -hmm. because you don't want to feel the pain. Yeah. And I do believe that, you know, you have to feel the pain in order to get to the other side. And your mother, I've watched her, it's almost been like a grieving process. And yes, it's devastating to go through what we're going through right now. And, and it's hard. And, but what I do know that, is that with your mother that all things are possible. I know that with God, all things are possible, but I think that God gave me and you and the rest of our family, your mother, because she's the glue. Yeah. And to one thing that she and I didn't really, so you and I are very different. Or no, just, I don't know why I just say that. I mean, me and mama are very different. You and I are very, very similar. Mm -hmm. So... This whole thing that we've been going through, mama didn't really get where I was coming from on the being angry part. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you have, like at the beginning, and really up until the past few months, you had that anger towards the situation that I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what did that feel like? Um, I, I don't... I think it was anger and frustration over how can this be happening when the facts show that it shouldn't be. Yeah. And we have all of this evidence and, you know, and, and we're, you know, we now know that the lie, we, we, we knew the lies that were being told and, but we felt like that God would allow that to be seen. 
And so I think that my anger grew from that. But then after kind of be because you know that when I have to process Mm -hmm. and I process better when I'm by myself, if it's out me in a car with my windows down, with my music on. You and me both. You, know, you me, and Gray yeah. are the same in that aspect. Yes. Like, leave me alone. Let me sit in my Give car. Give me a minute. Listen to my music. Yes. Music is therapy. And, you but. know, sometimes, you know, it's like I've said, sometimes you have to sit in your sorrow for a minute. Mm-hmm. You have to sit in your sorrow and you have to say, God, I know I'm not sitting here by myself. I just need to feel your presence. Yeah. If I can just feel your presence and God has done that for me and God has allowed me to feel his presence. And, you know, and I look back and I look at what Job went through and I look, you know, I look back at all the things, you know, that have happened in the Bible. And, and I think, you know, you had said something to me the other day, um, we were sitting at your pool house and we were having a really in-depth conversation about a lot of things And I was very emotional in that moment. And you said, but when is our time? Yeah. Why does this have to happen to, I mean, why us is what you said. Why us? And I looked around at your home and I looked around at at the blessings that you have. And my response to you was what? Why not? Why not? And the better question was really, why us? Why do you get to have what you have at at 25? Why do you live the way you live at 25? Why you? Yeah. You know, that's what I, that, you know, the emphasis that I wanted to put on it is, why you? Why have you led such a charmed life? You know, no, it's easy for people on the outside to look at us and say, you know what? Great looking family. You know, they've got it all together. Life is good for them. But no one knows the pain that I have gone through as a child, you know, which is, I've kind of been threatening my book now for what, three years. And I've kind of stopped because I've had to work through some of the pain that I'm putting in this. And, you know, you've had your own struggles. You've had your processing of pain. And, um, and you know, Holly, she and I, she, I was honestly shocked because we started talking about how we got to know each other and how we didn't really become close. We didn't become close until this past year or so. And she said, honestly, Savannah, like I looked at you and I was jealous of you. Like I didn't, I didn't like you because I, you've had this picture perfect life that it seemed like, and you know, you had it all together and I'm over here falling apart. And she said, and I was just, there was part of me that was jealous of you, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't until I took the time to get to know you to realize that we're more similar than we're not. Mm -hmm. And, but don't you think that's the, that that's kind of the way it is throughout the world? Yeah. Because I said on, on Chrissy confessions the other day, yeah, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that plug. Um, (laughs) I I said on Chrissy confessions yesterday, you know, I had mentioned to you yesterday we'd had lunch and that I'm mentoring a young country music artist here in town that's struggling right now with some stuff. And I said to him, I said, what you're doing is committing social suicide mm-hmm. because he compares himself to all of these other artists and people on social media and Instagram and TikTok, which you know, I don't even know how to do the TikTok <laughs> thing. And I don't want to know how to do that. Um, And I said, you understand that what you're looking at is not Mm -hmm. real. Yeah. I said, let me show you something. And then I went to your social media and I pulled Mm -hmm. up one of these thousand bikini pics because she's never missed an angle in a bikini that she didn't like. Um, No, but we spoke. See, y'all, he just got himself caught because if you would listen to my podcast in the first episode, I spoke about my gazillion bikini pics. Okay. And look, oh, what? So see, he, I may he's not have a, listened to the first. Yeah, one. <laughs> fair weather supporter we got here. Uh, so I spoke about all my bikini pictures, and I said, if I'm being honest, I said, yeah, there were some of these that I was having a great time in life. I said, but. I was only posting them to fill a void and to get any attention. And because you were promoting swimwear and stuff. Yes, but it was a job. It was a job, but there was also a lot of it that I was like, okay, I'm just doing this to get any attention Mm -hmm. because 
that's at that time what I thought I was just trying to fill a void. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm being honest with myself, that's really what it was about. mm -hmm. Well, I said to this young man, I said, let me show you something. And I scrolled through your Instagram and I said, I can tell you the day that she took this picture, her heart was breaking. Mm -hmm. She was struggling in her relationship. She couldn't figure out how to hold it together, how for both of them to get to the same place at the same time and want the same things. And her heart was breaking, but she had to post because she had a contract. Yeah. And you looked at this picture and said, look how happy she is. Mm -hmm. Folks, you can look happy on the outside and be dying on the inside. And so literally there's a, I had this in my notes and it says, why do post fill a void? Is it all in all just distraction? And is it another way to just not feel? I think it's another way to not feel because it's not a distraction because the problem is still there, but it is a medication to numb the pain Mm -hmm. because now you get, because like you get a lot of likes. Ah! She gets more than I do sometimes. (laughs) I can remember when Y'all. I used to be, I used to could brag about having more followers and now I think she bought them. <laughs> I did not <laughs> buy followers. Um, I wouldn't even know how to begin to do <laughs> well, that. We don't do that because we ain't that thirsty. No, we, we might be a thirst. We might be thirsty, but we ain't that thirsty. No. And to Instagram, their whole algorithm thing, anytime they sense that I'm promoting sassy by savannah it's like they try to hide my post Mm -hmm. so because they're not getting a cut of it exactly but um you know going back um and you know i've been you know how i've complained about social media for years yeah it's terrible and you know savannah would i would take a picture and or you know whatever and i'd send it to you and you said daddy uh, i need to take this picture when i'm with you because i got to edit around your eyes or daddy you got you know you need to go have your eyes done well and, but you know, I never was offended by that no. because I've always looked at you as kind of like my, kind of my, my compass of truth of yeah. pointing out what I need to have done. We're always that and, way. We've always been honest. Like, Hey, you need to go have this done or that done. Yes. Like, and then, you know, you never had time to edit my pictures. And then I got in trouble because I found this app that I used and I looked 12 years old. He looked like and an I, avatar. And I, and I posted it thinking that, Oh God, I look good because this is kind of what Savannah does to me. And I looked 12. Yeah, no, you looked like an avatar. But I had on a good shirt that day. Daddy, you looked like an avatar. It okay, now you don't have to go that far. I've acknowledged what I did. <laughs> I need to take that picture down. You really do. Um, but I'm not because it's a constant reminder of what you shouldn't do. Yeah. And I started saying to you, to Lindsay, Chase doesn't edit. No. He, he just puts his out there. Yeah. Which, and I always wanted to be that comfortable just to put it out there. But, you know, you and you and Lindsay, y'all will, y'all will have thigh gaps that a semi-truck can run through. Y'all will literally change. Y'all will literally. I don't. No, I don't do that now. I have weaned off of the, the editing. editing. Yeah. Just because it creates an unrealistic expectation, not only And you were afraid if you else. got abducted, no one would know who they were looking for. <laughs> Up. That's not true. I mean, who knows, maybe. But it also created unrealistic expectations for myself. Yes. Because when you're looking at a photo that you've edited a gazillion different ways, and then you look in the mirror and it's like, okay, well, why isn't this as smooth or that smaller or that? Like, you just, it's not good for anyone, the people watching or me. No. And, and, you know, I was saying to this young man, like I said, who's really struggling right now, I said, you're contemplating suicide, but you're committing suicide socially by holding yourself to the standards of false expectations in the world. And I said, be who you are. I said, no one wants to buy a duplicate. No one wants to buy a knockoff. Don't be a knockoff of what someone else is doing. Be you. You're a great looking kid. You know, you've got huge talent. Who cares that you've had a failed relationship? I've really never had any failed relationships. I mean, I mean, I can't relate to you on that because I mean, I was never really like a long-term commitment kind of guy. I mean, mine was like from Friday to Friday. Oh my gosh. Um, And then that one kind of, you know, um, what do you call it? Prep marriage or whatever I had the first time. (laughs) 
that was missing half the ingredients. This was like if you bought a Duncan Hines cake mix, you didn't have nothing but the box. The cake, the cake batter wasn't in there. I had no eggs. I had nothing. But I look back that the only relationship I've truly ever had has been God and your mother. And then, of course, my relationship with my children that I try to cultivate on a daily basis. And, you know, you and I are kind of in a in a place that we've never been before. And I'm kind of embracing that. And well, let me explain. So dad and I have always been we've always been so, so close. I mean, like almost twin close. Yes. I mean, there have been times to where it's literally even just the other day I was like yeah I woke up at three o'clock you were like oh my gosh let me send you this screenshot I took at like 309 yeah and it's weird stuff like that that happens to us but we've always just connected on a much different level a much deeper level yes yes and because of that though you and I both said we have a codependency on each other yes of And like, that's what I struggle with to this day, because I'm like, I don't know what I would ever do without you. And what did I say to you on Sunday? Which, which thing? That I did not build you to break. Yeah. And there will come a time when you do not have me. And that's when all of the stuff that I have poured into you will surface. That's when you're going to shine at your brightest because you're going to say, he's not here but I know he is. Yeah. I've told you, you'll be walking down a sidewalk with something on that I don't like, and all of a sudden you trip, and there's no reason why you tripped. And it's because you had on ripped jeans that I hated, so oh. I tripped you. <laughs> I can't. Um, but we've had ebbs and flows because there was a point in time to where I was, we were, I was telling you everything. Mm-hmm. Literally everything. Everything going on in my relationship. And I have realized that that's such a burden for me now. Yeah. it Well, it is. And too, it's also hard. I will say, y'all, it's so much easier for you to... It's so much easier for the person that's in the relationship to forgive than it is for all of yes. your friends and your family. Yes. So yes. if you're planning on staying with that person... Keep your dysfunction to yourself. Yes. yes. Keep your dysfunction to yourself because you're going to have to continue to hear about it. Mm -hmm. And you and I, I think that was one of the biggest things that I got so frustrated with was we didn't have healthy boundaries early on with like my relationship with Nick and Mm -hmm. with and which everyone knows that I like Nick. Yes, whatever. And so (laughs) I told you everything. Uh huh. And that was on me because that opened up the door to... For my criticism. And for your expectation of knowing everything. Right. And so I should But it should wasn't have, really just with Nick. I mean, I can go well, down the everybody. list. Yeah, it was everybody. I've known a lot of losers and their shortcomings. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I cannot. I mean, I have forbidden her to look at any... I'll marry a preacher. I know. Marry a preacher. Go out here and find you a nerd. Go out here and find <laughs> you a doctor. Stay away from attorneys. I'd rather you marry a da- somebody that plays the piano in a whorehouse than to marry an attorney. But, <laughs> you know, we don't do well with athletes. No, we don't. Because they're liars, cheats. They're misogynistic most of the time. They're egotistical and they're narcissistic. Oh, goodness. And... Well, I mean, that's just kind of how it is. And it's not to say that they're bad, that no. that's bad. It's just to say that these people, these kids have, have trained their whole life to get to where they are. And they can't handle a package that's as big as they are. You know? No, I didn't mean it that um, way. <laughs> I meant me. I'm the Narcissism package. runs all across the board of entertainment and athletics. Um, but... I do I think it. It that it's been, I do think it's been hard for you to date people that you are equal to. Yes. Or that you may overshadow. Yes. That has been a, that's been a thing for you. Yes. And you and I battle back and forth about that because I am 54 years old. You have said but daddy guys are not the same as your generation. But you have come to respect 
that my generation and the generation before mine were more respectful to women. Yes. Had a greater appreciation for a woman. And well, see, for- that's what one of my podcasts, literally, I think it was the podcast with Lindsay that we all were on. Part of the title was Daddy Issues. And Lindsay and I talked Which I about hate that. that. I know you hate it because there's such that's exactly why we did it was because there's such a negative connotation. To yes, that. it's it sounds so negative, but I've talked to therapists. And yeah, because like, there's a website that came up on my Instagram. <laughs> I told you about this yesterday, and it said it's sugar daddy season. Okay, and I didn't know what that meant. Okay, well. It just means it's getting cold outside. No, it doesn't. It means these young girls are being hosed with uh, with people like that could be old enough to be their daddy or granddaddies. I know what it means now. Chase okay. has told me. Okay. Well, besides that's besides the point. I've talked to therapists and they have said it can be. Yes, there is a negative part of it because it could be that a father was so absent mm-hmm. or there we is a part. That ain't the issue. Yeah, that was not the issue. Or there's a part that your father was so present and it gave, like, you're searching for that person in every person you go to date. Well, I think that's always been the case because when you look back at, like, me and your mother, for example, I looked for someone that had qualities like my mother. Yeah. And I got it. All of it. Uh um, you know, I wanted, a, I wanted a beautiful wife. I wanted a hot wife. I wanted one that was going, you know, that was going to turn tricks in the bedroom that she was going to cook, clean, take care of my kids, place me number one, unrealistic expectations. Yes. Unrealistic, unrealistic expectations. Although I got that. Yeah. I got all of that. And I know that's probably hard for you to understand that your mother was a trickster, but oh my God. you know, it is. I did get all of that. And so obviously when Chase started looking, you know, for to get out here and seriously date, because I've told y'all for years, y'all are dating for fun. You're not dating with purpose. You're not dating with intention. Yeah. Y'all are dating, oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go jump on this shot, and I'm gonna go jump on this private plane, and I'm gonna go to this game, and I'm gonna go do this, and you know, this girl's dad owns this football team and and I'm like, I've raised a house full of hoes. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course. What are, like, you, what are you doing? Go date for purpose, date for love. But let me tell you, once you've had, for me, mm-hmm. once I've had a failed engagement and all of that, I'm not looking to date for purpose. I'm looking to date for fun. But then that would be, that would be why you're single. Yeah, because I'm not wanting that serious thing so we're this is going to be probably a three <laughs> podcast interview oh goodness help um me. i think that the reason your generation is where it is because i researched this before i came today oh here we go statistically y'all. statistically you have your generation has the worst success rate of relationships in the history of the country you're talking about divorce rates I'm talking about success rate. I'm going to get to the divorce rate. Success is all relative. 54% of all relationships today, all marriages end in divorce. Yes. That wasn't my generation. But also, mom and I had this conversation. Mm -hmm. The reason it wasn't your generation is because it was very common to turn a blind eye to a lot of things. Or I would say it was very common to turn inward to each other to recognize the issue we have and let's now sit down and decide is this issue enough to cause us to split our children up for me to have another man come in my home and discipline my children on a part-time basis yes we turned inward but that you and i have had this conversation before Mm -hmm. though just like nanny faye papa jean that generation yes it was common you turn a blind eye. Yes. And their have, generation way more so than mine. But as it just continued to trickle and you have, there are so many situations that you would not encourage me to stay in 
a marriage if certain things were happening. No, 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 no. That's so, you know, that's not what I'm saying. I just think we're more outspoken in today's day and age. Well, I think no, I think that you absolutely are more outspoken, but I think that when you speak, you actually don't know what you're talking about. I think that's what your generation's responsible for. Because mm, you don't not take, everyone. We don't get the right to put everyone in a box. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna put everyone in her generation in a box. I'm just gonna say the majority. <laughs> um the there's lack of communication. My generation, your mother has said, I will talk life back into something. Yes. Um, but you are one person. Mm -hmm. But your mother wasn't that way. Exactly. She's five so years younger than me. She wasn't that way. And now she wants to have those, those deep conversations. But what I was saying is, is with your generation, 54% of today's marriages end in divorce. The success rate of what your generation, and when I say your generation, I'm going from your age group, your generation considers a successful relationship one that has lasted for more than 18 months. More than 18 months is considered, I knocked this out of the park. Now we still split the grocery bill when we go to Publix. And Which we still I don't that get. stick between there because this is your stuff and this is my stuff. Mm -hmm. I have seen that so many times. And if you can't buy me groceries, like we say, kick rocks and sketchers. Exactly. Go on. Because I'm not going to show you my penis if you can't buy me a hot dog. <laughs> I hope. If you want to see my hot dog, buy me a hot dog. I'm not going to. That's the craziest thing in my in my life because you know what I've always said. What man? A. I don't understand this whole fixation with men going to the grocery store all the time. Well, that's I mean, you. I, no, because I think it's their escape to try to hook up with some desperate wife that's in there who hates her husband. I don't understand. I've been three but, times and I've been married for 30 years. But that is y'all. What works for y'all doesn't work for everyone. Works for me. I got 30 years. What did you try to say to me a couple of months ago? You and Ch it was it? No, it was you. You said, and you act like that you know everything. I said, well, I can tell you what I do know. I know how to keep a relationship for 30 years. And that's what none of y'all can do. <laughs> so there we go. So, but what I was saying is, is that what man thinks that he has, because a woman is supposed to be cherished. Yes. A woman is supposed to be respected. This is a woman that could bear your child. This is a woman that is going to raise your child, that is going to nurture your child, that is going to hopefully help you grow as a man and give you the desire to be a better man, which ultimately helps you be a better woman. Yeah. And you are splitting a pack of honey buns. Who's doing this? Daddy, I know. You're getting real. You're getting real uh, passionate. Let's I am because let's I just cannot understand why we're, why, you know, this is your broccoli. This is my cauliflower. Okay. Well, yes, but I, tr I've seen that. Trust me. I have. No, but then when you dated. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying. They would have kicked rocks and sketchers. Yeah, they would have. They would be long gone because I'm not doing that. It is your, for me, I know what works for me. And the well, do you reason, think that's because you're now learning not to cut you off? Because yeah. I know it is unlocked and it is your podcast. No, it's fine. I'll let you do your thing. <laughs> but don't you think that today you know more about your self-worth today than you did in previous relationships? 100%. Okay. And that's what I've spoken about previously in other episodes was I don't have the right to hold someone accountable for something that I never communicated in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I can't hold you accountable for not meeting my needs if I didn't properly communicate what my needs were. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is what I have noticed. And like I said, even with Chase this morning, he was like, is there anything I can do for you? And I go, no, I'm good. But it was the but, tone of the way you said, no, I'm good. Well, no, I mean, I was rushing this morning and I know because was, I got it too. Well, yeah, like I was, I was I, rushing. Um, is there something you need? Because I'm really trying to get out of here. I've got no. someone else on my podcast. No. <laughs> and she gave that person a better time slot than she gave me. No, what happened was just like I answered the phone to make sure nothing's wrong. Right. Hey, what's up? You start talking. I was like, hey, is there anything that you need specifically? Because I got to hurry. I got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. But with Chase, it was like, do you need anything? I'm like, no. But instead of taking a second 
to breathe and say, hey, yeah, maybe if you could do this, that would be great. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it all. And then I'm going to have anger at the end because I did it all. But I did that to myself. And that's why it's called unlocked. Because you just unlocked something within yourself that recognized I should have said I've got a brother here who loves me enough that's calling to check in to see if I can do something for you. But because I'm such a control freak like my father, I'm going to control everything and then be resentful because you still didn't do it for me, even though I told you not to. Exactly. I've had to learn that. And I've had to learn to ask for help and that it's okay to... It's just, I've never wanted someone to think that... You couldn't do it all. That Well, not even that, just that I am taking from them or that I owe them something Mm -hmm. or like, I've never wanted anyone to say, Oh, she owes me this. Like, no. Well, we all owe someone somewhere something. Mm -hmm. I owe my mother gratitude every day of my life for being such a hard worker and for providing for me and for allowing me to be that kid that sat and dreamed for a bigger life. I owe that to my mother. I owe to my dad so many things that I fought with him over that I look back at now and I'm not going to do it because I said I'm not going to cry on this episode. I look back now at things that my dad has said to me that had I taken that advice rather than having to be so prideful to think that I knew more than he did Mm -hmm. and he had forgotten more than I'm ever going to know. Yeah. But had I taken some of that advice, wouldn't have got married the first time because my daddy was at the end of the altar. He did say before the doors opened and she walked out, now's your time to run. <laughs> and I was so, I was more afraid of my mother than I was my daddy. And so I knew that if I ran, my mother would have killed me. So I stood there in shock. And I just think that we all owe someone something. I mean, you know, when you talk about owing, I mean, we owe what we do for a living to the Osbournes. Yeah. The Osbournes paved that way for the Kardashians and the Kardashians continued to pave it for us. And we've continued to pave it for other shows. And so we all owe someone something. We owe Aaron for this setup that you have for your podcast. Um, You know, we owe the gardener that's out there mowing the yard that we're not wanting to do. Yeah. So I think we all have a debt to repay in some in some way. We owe the person that smiled at us walking down the sidewalk that allowed us to think, you know what? Today's really not that bad a day. Yeah. So I do think that we always owe. So I think from your perspective, A, I'm always going to be your biggest fan because oh, yeah. I love you beyond measure. There are no words that I can use to articulate how how deep my love goes for you. But I also love this new direction of love that I have for you. Because I I feel like we're learning proper boundaries. Well, that, that, and I feel like that you've got it. I think that I just, I think that I held on so long because I wasn't sure that you had it. Mm -hmm. And I think now I know that you have it. Um, I, I don't agree with some of the way, some of the thought processes that you have. And I will say that most of them are still wrong. Um, but they're yours. And I sent you a text message. But you still love me through it. Uh, that's I, that's literally, I, I literally just sent you that text message and I wanted to pull it up. Um, and that's the whole point of this podcast was to create a space for differences of opinions, but still coming together and respecting and loving and being present. Yes. Um, I said to you, And, you know, this is about a situation that you're currently working on right now. Yes. I said, but do what you feel is best for you. And that's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. And for those that it's not, well, they won't matter anyway. Yep. So, you know, 
I told you above that, I said, you deserve nothing but the very best. But remember that the very best may not always look that way until you polish it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm known for polishing turds. I mean, I'm known for that. Yes, um, you are. But, you know, I think that my level of respect for you, it's waned in some areas and improved in others. Mm -hmm. And when I look at it and I analyze through my therapy every Monday, well, why do you have, why do you not respect her position on this? Because my process is anger first. Because why are you being stupid? Why are you not listening to what I'm telling you? And I've realized that maybe you're not listening to what I'm telling you and you can't receive what I'm telling you because of the way I'm delivering it to you is one of it. And I think that you are so convicted to your thought process at that moment that you're not going to see it any other way because there's no other way to see it because your way is the right way. And but also, too, I just believe that we all believe what we believe. Yes. Like, we all believe what we believe, and we have certain reasons for believing that. Mm -hmm. And I'm also in a place, though, like, normally I would be hurt or I would have offended. taken offense mm -hmm. to you saying that you have lost, what'd you say, respect? I said there's certain, or, certain things that you say that I lose respect yes. for. Yes. Like, normally I would have taken offense to that, mm -hmm. but I'm in a place to where I get that we don't have to like everything about someone. Right. Like, we don't have to like it, and I'm also not going to allow s certain feelings to, like, not everything's about me. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. So it's the way I that you that. feel, you feel how you feel, and mm -hmm. you're val like, then that is valid. And the way that someone responds to you may not really be about you. Yeah. It's, it's not always about you. Right. And that's what I've learned. And I'm not going to allow that to, I want to put that on replay. I want you to put it on your <laughs> podcast three times. It's not always about me. So Chase can see that. Okay. So he can call you out on social media. Okay, perfect. We'll do that. I, I'm just not going to allow it to also control and affect my entire day mm -hmm. because I've realized that I can't, first off, you don't grow and learn that way. No. And well, you don't grow. Let me tell you something. And, and I don't mean to cut you off no. on your own show. That's I'm, fine. It's fine. I'm I think you said that about four or five times now. Um, well, cause I'm getting old enough. I don't tell you right away. Then I kind of move on to something <laughs> else. Um, I think that, that you grow during the storm. Mm hmm. You grow during the trying times. You grow during your, tribu your, your tribulation season. You don't have a testimony without a trial. And you're not sitting here growing and, and realizing that you're this great person sitting on a beach yeah. when everything, when all your bills are paid and there's no strife in your life. Yeah. That's not the growth season. No. What we're going through right now is growth season. Yeah. And it's that season of what I have said to y'all that it's almost like when the Forestry Commission comes in and does a control burn, they're burning off the top of the, the bad top of the layers so that the new growth can, can come out. Um, and I've seen a lot of that in you. I would have liked to have seen it, some of it sooner, but I've had to learn that I don't get to control someone's growth process that as well as you've said you would look if when you look back you would do things differently yes, there are certain lots. things you would have done differently and our relationship got to be so transactional in a sense like of word. but listen there was a quote that i had seen and read and it was because you'll get where I'm going with it because I took a screenshot of it. We've become transactional instead of relational in certain ways. Because for me, I knew that in order for you to not get pissed off, I had to do things a certain way. So I found myself lying about a lot of stuff because I was afraid. Stole my car when she was 15 <laughs> years old. Whatever happened a few times okay um a few 
<laughs> She's only acknowledged one time. Tonight. Well, yeah, because we pushed the Prius out of the driveway. Because, you know, that was an easy one to take. Uh, <laughs> and, too, because it would always be parked under y'all's bedroom. So we just pushed it, Chase. You know, Chase or one of us got in the driver's side and the other pushed it. I've but, raised a bunch of derelicts. And then once we got far enough away, we started it. But that's besides the point. I for so I feel like it hit so hard in the past year or so, like that strife and change because for so long I lied because I felt that I didn't want to cause issues by doing things how I wanted to do it or being exactly who I was or whatever it may be. But were you, so I, I, I get that. Yes. But were you actually, during those times that you were lying, was that really who you were? I feel like there was a good, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe it was 50-50. Like maybe so part you was of a, it. You, so you was a liar 50% of the time. You were shady 50% of the time. You were sketchy 50% of the time. Sketchy, shady, same thing. Okay. All right. Well, listen, it helps to know what you're working with. No. know the room you're in it's just i think for so long perfectionism was all that there was to be in my eyes like if you were perfect there was nothing else like there was nothing that anyone could ever say about you but you should have known differently because i've always been perfect and people talked about me <laughs> yeah i mean exactly um but but you, you get what i'm saying yes, like i put were, so much pressure on myself you did yes i did but also you have said you've put so much pressure i on placed us to be expectations on my children that i sent you to the best schools your mother and i worked every day of our life to pay all of that tuition mm -hmm. And our expectation, which we have a right to, is that if we're sending you and placing you in these kind of environments, that you are to do the very best that you possibly can. You don't skip school. You don't lie and say that you're sick and, and, and all this other stuff because we're not checking. We're not lying and saying we're sick. We're still going to school. And we're, we're still going to work and paying that tuition. When I say to you, when I buy you a new car, now Savannah, you must take care of this. Your mother and I have worked hard for this. We want you to take care but of it. We're talking and about then two you run it into a pine. Things. Then you run it into a pine thicket. We're, or you back into brick walls. No, what we're talking about is expectation and transact. You said transactional and relational. Yes. Relational is when you get to have expectations. I but see, that's where I feel like we differ because relational, I feel like is when you can be a hundred and ten percent honest Hon with and someone authentic. and authentic without feeling like you need to change who you are because you're afraid of how that person's going to respond. But have you ever felt like you had to change who you are at your core for me? No, I think I've felt and it's because I felt yeah, a lot of it I've done to myself because okay. there's a level of perfection that I have wanted to reach that it's like I've just been so afraid of disappointment. When in reality well, were you disappointing yourself or was it No, you, disappointing you. I've never The only time you've really ever disappointed me was when you cut all your hair off. Okay. Well, I had no choice but to do that. But I just feel like there's so so many parents have to go through this with their child. We're not mm -hmm. the only one to go through it. Right. You and I have done a really good job at communicating it. Mm -hmm. And I have had to, because it goes back to what I said, is you, I've set unrealistic expectations because I've made it seem like I am this way 110% of the time when in reality, that's not who I want to be. But that's all that you know. Right. Because that's what I've put forward. Mm -hmm. So if I would have not had a fear of saying, well, this is what I really want to do. I just never wanted to disagree with with you. I never wanted to because. And, and I actually, I actually enjoy when y'all disagree because yeah. it tells me that you're, that you're, that you're a self thinker that, you know, you're, you, you know, you've got a, you've got a different idea. I want you talking to me and let's talk through these processes of why this may not be the best idea. Um, you know, I mean, I've done that with your love life and I mean, I'm, I'm kind of batting like I'm in the, 
What is it? What does baseball Y'all, people do? World he's series. gonna sit here. I'm in the World Series. Yeah. She's still on the bench. Nah. Um, he's gonna sit. He's flip or flop. Who have I ever flipped a flop with? He's I never liked flop. number one. Didn't like number two. No, that's not true. He likes him till he doesn't, till he does again. <laughs> Who? I'm daddy. I'm just gonna go ahead and call this shit out. No, you're not. Because I no. ain't never liked, I ain't never loved nobody except Nick. Then that's because Nick's stroking right now. <laughs> Nick's doing great right now. What are no, you talking about? Yeah, it's because oh, he's cause... stroking. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. My, okay, here we go. Yeah. Um, but what I'm saying is, is that decisions that you have made that was opposite of what I had encouraged you to do. Have those panned out as well as you had hoped they would? Some yes, some no. What would the majority, if you had to say? On the I percentage? mean, I haven't really ever made any big decisions. Well, like you, like you made your cosmetic decision. Yes. You did that. Yes. And I told you to go a different route. Yes. You chose not to. She was right. I was wrong. I can give you that. Yes, but like I've never really, we've done a really good job at, and our situation's a little different because we're in business together. Right. We're da- dad, daughter. Yes. We're, we've learned to, I feel like transition. You're always going to be my dad. Yes. Like in every decision, you're always going to be my dad, but we've also transitioned into a friendship as well. Well, I think we've transitioned into a healthy friendship. Yes. And into healthy co-workers. Yes. Um, rather than me controlling everything and, you know, Savannah, you need to go do this scene or Savannah, I just signed you up for this. I mean, we just talked about yesterday a project that was presented to me and I had to come to you with it. And you're like, uh, I don't know. I'll think about it. And I'm like, what do you mean you're thinking about it? <laughs> this is X amount of dollars. You need to do this. And you're like, I need to think about it. And I walked away from that. Yeah. Now I did come back to her this morning and say the number went up. But, and so I think she's thinking much harder today. Um, but we've learned to create boundaries. You, you, I will say you have been really good at learning to create boundaries and because with my whole generation, it's we all want a boundary until we don't want it. Right. And so we kind of take it a whole other way. For you, you've been very intentional on creating boundaries and saying, I don't need to know every part of your life. I don't. Because I've gotten to a place where it's like, yeah, if I'm doing some shady stuff, I ain't going to tell you. Mm-hmm. But Which I would rather. What did I say to you? You would rather me not. I said right? I would rather you not lie to me. Yes than to tell me something that I want to hear. Yes. Because A, to me, lying is one of the most disrespectful things that you can do. And especially, it's almost like triple down effect when you lie to someone that you know loves you and has nothing but pure intentions for you. Yes. I think that's triple down effect lie. Yeah. Um, But I also have to, and have had to, and I'm still trying to get there, I need to not place my children in a position to have to lie to me because certain things that you are doing at 25 and 27 and 33 and 32 are not necessarily my business to know. I don't, you know, if, if you choose to go out with somebody that's a ginger and ugly and I don't, A, I don't want to know that because that's very disturbing to me. Um, but if you choose to not tell me that you're going out with someone or you're going on a date or I'm going to have lunch, I mean, you know, I did just find out that she went to lunch with someone on Stormy Warren show, but, um, which is proof she doesn't tell me everything, but I don't need to know those things. Yeah. And that way it doesn't put you in a position to say, oh my God, I just went to, to dinner with a ginger who has a beard and his tatted from asshole to elbow and daddy would have a heart attack. So I'm going to tell him that I went and had lunch with Aaron because Aaron will lie for me. Well, yeah, I got me some solid ones. You got some solid ride and die lies. That's what you got. Um, And you know, you can't crack her. You can't 
crack her sisterhood because you know, I try to kind of worm my way in. Oh, and yeah. Say, How are you doing today, Erin? How are you doing today, Holly? Things going good? How was Savannah last night? Well, she was good. Good. Did you know? Did she have anything to drink? No, we you know we we left and went to <laughs> you know we 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 got out of that place. It what it wasn't for us. Mm hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, I have learned find some real ones, y'all. I have learned respectful boundaries. Well, no, because Chad, you Chad are, is a prime example. Yes, who I have said to you, everyone that follows us knows that Chad rides for Savannah and is going to die for Savannah. And a Chad's gay. So you cannot run game on a gay person nine right. times out of 10 because they've already been shit on their whole life. So they're just like, nah, I'm, I'm ready for you. Yeah. I know what angle you're coming at. And I've tried to do that while Chad's cutting my hair. So how's Savannah doing? Still talking to Nick? Todd, I'm going to tell you now, you got something you want to know from Savannah? Go ask Savannah. Chad, I know you're lying for. Well, if you know I'm lying, why are you asking me? And so I just don't even ask anymore because I'm tired of I'm tired of having y'all get a front row seat at the gates of hell for lying for each other. So I'm just not going to send them there. I just think that it's healthy boundaries. But yes, but you were forced into that boundary because nobody would tell you anything. Well, some did, and I just didn't want to tell on them. Uh huh. And I didn't want to kind of put them out there. I mean, Aaron's not one of them. Um, but there's been a few friends. Aaron, Holly, and Chad. You should ride with. Yes, exactly. And so other than that, like. You should ride with. And I've always told you when you've tried to say to me, how did you find that out? And you also too though, but I know how you operate. You act you like really you don't. know. Yes. You act like you know something okay. until somebody tells on themselves and he, you've done it our whole life. Yes. Because y'all were dumber. But now I figured out another strategy. It's called spying. Mm hmm. Well, um, spy all you want. You're probably going to see some stuff you don't want to see. So you bring in heartache and scarring on yourself. <laughs> well, and then there you go. There you go. So um, don't, it ain't my sin to atone for. So that's all I'm going to say. But, you know, going back to what we were talking about is that I think as a parent, we have to get to a place to where we love our children still unconditionally, but we love them with proper boundaries. And when I say proper boundaries, that's just not me extending proper boundaries to you. Yeah. That's me demanding that you give, that you respect my boundaries. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, your sister said to me the other day, adulting is the hardest decision she's ever made. Mm -hmm. And she's 33 and does very well, is self-sufficient. I don't give her a dollar. She makes her own money and she's done very well at it and lives a very... Very wonderful lifestyle on her own. And she did that on her own terms. Even during the time that we were not talking, I still was cheering her on from the sidelines. I want my children to succeed. But one of the greatest compliments that she's given me was, had it not been for you creating the platform of Chrisley, I wouldn't be where I am with coffee combos or Southern tea. 100%. Um, so that was a great compliment to me because it meant that she took what I created and she went and built something of her own off of that. Mm -hmm. You have done that with Sassy by Savannah. You've done that with Unlocked. You've done that with your, um, all your hair products and stuff that you've got coming out now. You did all of that without me, but you did have my name. Um, <laughs> hey, I'll so take it. At the end of, well, I mean, right now it's probably not as good as it has been. Hey, scandal works. Scandal might work works. for you. It ain't going to work for me. Uh, I mean, she don't still be making money. I might still be asking her to send me money. Hey, um, you know, I got you. But at any rate, <clears throat> I think that where we are in mine and your relationship, I have a peace with you because I trust you. Mm -hmm. I trust you to be a good person. I trust you to be an honorable human being. I trust you to ethically do the right thing. I trust your integrity. Um, I trust that you're going to always take care of yourself, that you're going to make sure your roots are not showing, that you've taken care I of your hands I will always. It doesn't matter how rough life gets. Always go through the bad. If you got to go through the valley, make sure, you gotta, make sure your roots have been done, you've had a fresh manicure mm -hmm. and pedicure. Because you don't know how long you're going to be in the valley. 
Yeah, that's true because, y'all, the first time you can meet somebody could be your last. You've always taught. <laughs> You've always taught us. <laughs> These are the moments that she's not willing to unlock. But if we stay on here long enough, you'll know that she is unlocked. <laughs> Y'all, I just sent him a text. I've got to go to the bathroom so bad right now. I've been taking the, I haven't been able to go in days. And I. T- and now we've got to be subjected to it. Leave it, leave it in. Go, Jen. We'll, we'll let Todd talk while you're going. No, it's fine. We're about to wrap it up. Trust me, we are, because I got to go. But the but last question I've got. In. Because I don't like talking about things like that. Oh, I don't care. I, I that's why money. that I have class and y'all don't. Well, I just Might can't. be convicted class, but I've got class. Okay, well, whatever. Um, It's a question I do like to ask people who come on Unlocked. What do you risk by just being completely vulnerable and unlocked? I think you risk everything. Because you limit yourself, you you put yourself in a position of gaining really nothing that's authentic. Mm -hmm. I think that if I sit across from you and I don't give you who I truly am, then you will never know who I truly am. So therefore, you have fallen in love or like or respect with an image that is not real. And I don't want people in my life that doesn't love me for exactly who I am. I want people in my life because it takes the stress off of you as a human being to be able to be 100% authentic because then you know the people that are around you are in love with you because of you you being exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be on. How many times a week do you say, go to dinner with me. Let's go out to dinner. Yeah. When the cameras go down, what's the first thing I do? Pajamas in bed. And I'm like, no, I've been on for 10 hours today. I don't want to go out and be on right now. I mm-hmm. want to stay at home. I want your mom to fix me something to eat. And y'all can go do whatever you want to do. I don't want to be on. You are 25 years old. You love the celebrity. You love the lifestyle. You love traveling. You love all these new projects. And, and kind of your mission is to make life better for so many people through the things that you do. And I think, too, that's that I have come into is because... Yes. I feel like there's something so liberating about going out here and traveling and being able to say, I'm going to do this, that. Like, I've always said, before COVID hit, like, you know, I said I wanted to move to New York City for a year just to say Who that. Who was moving to New York in COVID? I said, before COVID hit, before COVID hit, I said I wanted to move to New York City for a year mm-hmm. to, like, say that I've done it to truly experience it because Mm -hmm. I feel like there's something so liberating as a woman walking down the streets and like feeling like I can do this. Mm -hmm. And that's a place that I'm at in my life right now is I want to be super successful in my career. I do love being in the spotlight because I feel like it gives me a voice to be there for other people, to help them through what they're going through and to also be financially independent and not have to rely on a man. Now, granted, I want you to have your own stuff, and I do want you to support me. So I want the best of both worlds. Um, no, let's clear that up. You want them to support you how? Oh, well, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, spiritually financially. Because it is the man's job to what? To lead. It is the man. Yes. Now, when I now I ain't telling you to follow somebody that's a window licker. <laughs> it is a man's job to, when I say to lead to set a proper example yes. for his wife to where she feels the desire to follow her husband because he knows she knows that he knows what he's doing. Exactly. But it is a man's job to provide a home to put a roof over his wife and children's head, food on the table. He is to support her financially and to help her to find her place, Mm -hmm. to find her spot in life. And it's as equally responsible for a wife. I'll support you too. Don't worry about it. Yes. But (laughs) not financially. No, not financially. I've done nothing. Support him spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, but keep your check. Yeah. I can make you some good food. I can. She won't, but she can. No, I can, and I will. If you're supporting me, I support you. Her, your thing is, is that 
again, it goes back to the statistics that I was talking to you about. Your generation is very tit for tat. No, we're not going back into this. Oh, we're not here tit we for go. tat. No, we're not. Okay, go ahead. I'm not that way. She doesn't want me to talk about this because she's got to take a shit. Yes, basically. I'm trying to wrap this up, y'all. I've been trying to wrap it up for 10 minutes. So enough with the tit for tat. But I want to see really stuff. how long she can hold it. No, we're not. Because <laughs> I've been full of shit my whole life. So <laughs> like, let's be real here. This is, none of this is staying in here. <laughs> oh, it is. No, it's not. All of this is no, staying in here. Nobody wants to know about a woman taking a shit. Okay, well... <laughs> It happens. It happens. I don't care. My stress level Dude, has been... do you think about a hot chick taking a shit? Thank you. <laughs> you ain't it got is... a boyfriend now. You're not going to have one. Okay, well, it is what it is. It happens. Stress levels, my endometriosis, all of it. I've just got issues. So thank the government for all my issues. There, You're getting my medical bills. Go on. Thank you for coming on Unlocked. Oh, that's it? <laughs> We didn't, we, you can't end like that because we were in the middle of something. I'm, not, I'm sweating. I don't even know we were in the middle <laughs> you of You just have to, I, I'll get you to the end. I guess what I'm trying to say and what you're trying to say is that it's okay to agree to disagree. Yes. To have proper boundaries, to respect each other's boundaries, and to not be a liar. Yes, exactly. Don't be a liar. Yes. Not talking about me on that. <laughs> um, but I'm grateful that you had me on your podcast. I'm sure that after you see how much better I do in the numbers than everyone else, mm -hmm. you'll ask me to come back. Hey, maybe you could be like a co-host like once a month. No, I get paid for that. Um, yeah, well, no. This is the only freebie you get. No, that's not how it works. Yeah. Your sister's already trying to book me again. Okay. I am tired of my kids she living off of me. She tried to book me too. She already tried to book me too. For holiday content. Yeah, me, me too. So she's two-timing. Yeah, two-timing mm -hmm. heifer. Thank well, you, Lindsay. I'm getting you on that one. <laughs> well, I love you. I I'm love proud you. of you. I'm so hugely proud of how well you're doing with this podcast, how well you're doing with your Sassy by Savannah. Um, I still need those kits for my friend's daughters that you keep saying you're going to get, but they don't I have got any. got you. Um, so I need those. Um, but I'm proud of you, Savannah. I, I love, love you. you. See, look, that's our... I love you thing. so much and God bless you always. I love you. Thank, Thank you. you.